I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is God's saving power for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Gentile. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed through faith, for faith, as it is written, the one who is righteous will live by faith, or the one who is righteous through faith will live. There are plenty of things we might be ashamed of. Things done in our past. Things done in the dark. Things that we think in our mind, which should no longer be because Christ has purchased the ability for us to engage in mind renewal. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and injustice of those who by their injustice suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. Ever since the creation of the world, God's eternal power and divine nature, invisible though they are, have been seen and understood through the things God has made. So they are without excuse, for though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their senseless hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. And they exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling a mortal human or birds or four-footed animals or reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in the desires of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them over to dishonorable passions. Their females exchanged natural intercourse for unnatural, and in the same way, also the males, giving up natural intercourse with females, were consumed with their passionate desires for one another. Males committed shameless acts with males and received in their own persons the due penalty for their error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them over to an unfit mind and to do things that should not be done. They were filled with every kind of injustice, evil, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, craftiness. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, rebellious toward parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. They know God's decree that those who practice such things deserve to die. Yet they not only do them, but even applaud others who practice them. I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is God's saving power for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Gentile. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed through faith, for faith, as it is written, the one who is righteous will live by faith, or the one who is righteous through faith will live. But this now, this person, this place, this thing of good news, manna, manna, what is it? The gospel is forgiveness and reconciliation. For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us and that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely, therefore, since we have now been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life.
But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. We have been forgiven, that is, released from our debts. And we now have the ability to allow ourselves the freedom to move on, to move on from those things in the past, those things done in the dark, those things that even in our maturity as believers, we sometimes dwell on just a little too long. The freedom to move on from shame, move on from fear, and to move on from guilt. We are now made ministers of reconciliation. For as we have been reconciled by God to God through the God-man Jesus Christ, let us therefore go out and share this good news with the world that they too have been reconciled. Today is the day of visitation. He can be found only if you search for him with your whole heart. He is not too far from any one of us. He is near. He is here. The gospel is salvation and restoration and new life. The salvation afforded to us since we were dead broke in our transgressions and iniquities has both individual and universal implications. We know that we have been reconciled, that is, put back into right relationship with God. Our slates wiped clean, our accounts settled. Who we used to be, dead, gone, buried. Some describe this transaction with the words paid in full. But what in the name of the God of this universe does this salvation mean for the cosmos? for the entire created order, everything that is not human. In Hebrews 9 and 28, it reads, Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. He, Jesus, as stated in Acts chapter 3, verse 21, must remain in heaven until the time of universal restoration that God announced long ago through his holy prophets. We await the return of Christ as creation waits for us to step into our destiny, which shall then bring about the restoration of all things. We stand, like the prophet Jeremiah, at the crossroads of life, looking for and being led back to the ancient paths, those ways of old, that time and place where we find rest for our weary souls. We embrace our consummated wholeness, knowing that the Lord is not simply putting broken pottery pieces back together with glue, painting over the cracks and fractures with gold, as is done in the ancient Japanese art form of kintsugi, as beautiful as it may be, he has in fact already made us new. We have new life. We receive a new nature. We are a new creation. We breathe and bring the freshest of air as heirs of the king. We are his children, for in him we live and move and have our being. The gospel is a message of love, grace in action, a powerful force. There is no greater love than to lay one's life down for one's friends. Jesus gave of himself freely to save, rescue, deliver, and restore all that was corrupted due to that decision in the garden long ago a decision which stemmed from influential rebellion on a universal level. God is love. God loved us first. Jesus is the fullness of God dwelling that is living in bodily form. He is the ultimate measure of grace and truth, spending time and supping with the lowest of low according to society's standards. He met people where they were, while also understanding where they would be as God saw them. He stepped in, mediating conflict, 
causing accusers to run in several directions so that the accused adulteress would receive her highest affirmation as a daughter of the Most High God. In the gospel of Jesus Christ, we have the destruction of bondage where he says, neither do I condemn you, go and sin no more. This force that is the gospel has the power to correct our imbalance and inclination to see ourselves as less than who we really are and act accordingly. I am not ashamed of the gospel and the gospel beloved is not ashamed of me. The gospel is a gift. It is a promise, a guarantee for us to understand the gospel as a gift, promise, or guarantee, we must first ask ourselves a question. How did we get here? And more importantly, why do we need it? The gospel, that is. Why do we need the gospel? Hey, Dad. Hey, what's up, Sonny? Can you tell us the gospel again? <laughs> of course I can. All right, you guys take a seat. But this time, start all the way from the beginning. All right, I'll start all the way at the beginning, just for you, at Genesis. You ready? Okay. God created man and gave him his commandment. Sat him in his garden with everything he planted. Said, this is all yours, son. One that you can have it. All except for this one, because that one's just for daddy. The devil steps up in it right away with his deception. Said you can be a god if you just taste it, it's amazing You won't die, God's alive, throwing shade in his direction That small seed of doubt forms a change in his perception See if he had nothing, he'd appreciate that one thing God gave him everything, but he's focused on that one tree Sin is here, in his fear, he covered up in head He covered up in leaves, God covered him with skin. Hold that thought, let's fast forward to Abel and Cain Two brothers in the same field, playing they lame See Cain tended the ground, Abel tended the sheep both made an offer to God, but Cain's fell incomplete. Now put a pin in that, let's hit the Passover down in Egypt. When God hears the cries of them beating down his people. Israel's enslaved, Pharaoh saying they ain't leaving. Moses tells him God said it, but he still ain't want to free him. So God tells Moses, here's the plan, pay attention. Tell my people, they gon' need a lamb without a blemish One day you gon' get it, but for now You just kill it, take it home, smear its blood On the doorpost of the entrance See, Israel's my firstborn, and Israel's been taken If he don't let my son go, his son ain't gon' make it The penalty is death, and I'm coming for the payment Those covered in that blood will be the only ones escaping Now let's go back to Abraham, mobbing with his son Isaac Faith isn't faith until it's tested, so God tries him Said, I know how much you love your son, go and sacrifice him So Abe walks him up the mountain, straps him down and ties him He doesn't really understand it, but he has faith He know that God's good, so it's commanded He's grabbing his blade As he goes to stab him, the Lord yells, wait! He looks over, and God sent the lamb in his place Let's take a quick pause now before we get to Jesus Cause none of this will click until you see just why we need him The word of God says the wages for sin is death So if sin is how you work, then death should be the check there can be no forgiveness without the shedding of blood The penalty must be paid if God is a righteous judge We say just let it slide But if someone killed your cousin Would you call that judge righteous if his killer goes unpunished? Or would you call him crooked? And we know the Lord ain't that So there's a death penalty And someone has to pay that The moment that you sin Your life has been indebted And his mercy is the only reason he ain't yet collected So that's why they would sacrifice lambs in their places But it didn't clear the debt It was just a partial payment now we gon' take a recap and see the Lord working. Nothing was an accident, it all has a purpose. Now back to the beginning at the fall. Man sins, tries to fix it on his own. God covers him with skins, but it never says what animal he's getting it from. All we know is to cover man, he shed innocent blood. Now remember Cain and Abel, Cain's offer was rejected. You ever wonder why Abel's offer was accepted? All I know is Cain offered the work of his hands. Abel tended the sheep, so he must have offered a lamb. Now look at Abraham and I. Are you seeing it now? A ram in the bush sent to take the place of his child Cause Abraham had faith enough to give up his son God would later do the same so the forgiveness would come Back to the Passover, oh man, here we go with that lamb again The innocent blood of a lamb is covering man again You don't see the pattern or get what it means? Then it all becomes clear 
when Jesus steps on the scene. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and end. I am the Lamb without blemish, sacrifice for your sin. The Lamb of God without sin, little children understand. You can't do it on your own, it is me who covers man. I'm the one who took your place when death lifted up his hand. Gave you righteousness for faith. You're the one who broke the law, but it was I he sent to pay. Gave my life for those who hate me, I went quietly and I ain't even try to beat the case. I'm the offer he accepts when your works get rejected. I'm the one who pleads your case before the judge in heaven. Knew that you were guilty, but loved you enough to serve your sentence. The wages for sin is death. I died to expunge your record. See, I am the Passover. The wrath of God is waiting. Every life not covered by the blood will be taken. I'm the way, the truth, the life, and I will always be. I am, I am. Beloved, it was always me. The gospel is so many things to so many people. It's healing, freedom, restoration. It's a new start, another opportunity. The gospel is a message of love presented in the God-man Jesus Christ, one who gave his life for many. The gospel is a reflection of the goodness of God, that he loved us first without condition or a second thought. He didn't have to counsel with himself on whether or not this act of love was a good idea. He just did it because that's who he is. The gospel is saving grace, a barometer by which we can see how far we have to go without feeling guilty regarding the lack of progress made. The gospel is hope for a future, an expected end. It's our North Star, a guiding light, the principle under which we learn the basics necessary to contribute by the Holy Ghost and what God desires to do in this world. The gospel is fundamentally simple. It is the literal substitution of one who can do it all in the place of one who can barely do enough. The gospel is powerful. It enlivens our very being, bringing us back from the dead time and time again. It is a balm for our wounds, while simultaneously being the breaker of bandages which restrain us from new life in him. The gospel is a firm foundation, an anchor in rough seas, the cornerstone on which the building relies for the soundness of its structure. The gospel is an opportunity to overcome our human frailty, and limitations to access something greater, something otherworldly, matrix-like even. The gospel is the bringing together of families and reconciliation of relationships. The gospel is victory over the forces of darkness and every wicked thing that would try and stand in the way of who we are to become. The gospel can be summed up in these four words, Jesus in my place. It is Jesus in our place that affords to us in all the created order, forgiveness, reconciliation, salvation, restoration, new life, love, grace, and power. The gospel is a gift. Jesus Christ is a gift. As we continue in this season of unleavened bread in our celebration of Passover, let us recall and remember that Jesus is both the lion and the lamb. He is the lion of Judah who conquers death, one worthy of praise. He's the lamb of God who conquers sin, one worthy of worship. He is also the goat, the one who was blamed at Passover and conquered false accusation so that he could bring atonement for us all. He is one worthy of our adoration, our admiration, and our allegiance. He did all of this so that we would be free. My brothers and sisters, this is the gospel.